so when you open the program, this is normally the first thing that you'll see. And it will also highlight here this handshake icon in the upper left-hand portion. Now, this section on the side, we consider this the dashboard. It allows you to navigate from one part of the program to the other and do various things within each section as well. When that handshake icon is highlighted, you're going to see the main information for the client you're currently looking at here, which is normally just the first one in your list alphabetically when you open it up. All right, now next down here on the left-hand side is your best searching option. It looks like a pair of binoculars called Find Client. In here, there are two different search methods which you can utilize to access information on your clients pretty quickly. The first method assumes you know the name of the client you're looking for. So as you start typing out the name, you'll see it tries to predictively figure out who it is that you're looking for. That way you don't have to type the whole thing. In the event though, which is probably a little bit more common, that you get a call from the government and they've got a phone number or a business number or some sort of address, you can take any other piece of information you might have from your business client here, type it in this second field and run a search. What the program will do is it will scan all of the business client details and it will give you anything that it can find that matches with what you typed in. We're going to look at that right now. It's called the More Info tab just below the client's name here in the upper left. Now there are two sections in here designed for two different things, and these sections can be added to from anywhere in the program. You can do it by going to the client's file, clicking the green button for the upper or lower half, and you'll see that it will actually know the client you're doing this for. The upper section is for things like missing information and questions that need to be answered. Now let's say I have a question. So what I can do here is I'm going to open up the question mode. I'm going to call it test. And I'm going to assign this question to Bobby, because maybe Bobby is much better at answering this question than I myself will ever be. Or I could just be really busy and I need a hand. So I'm going to say, this is what I need you to find out for me. Now, it's possible that maybe I've notified the client in some way, so I may have left them a voicemail, in which case I would just click that I've notified them. Or I may have hit send notification at the bottom and chosen the email option, which will actually retype out the question for me, put in the client's email, and a nice... Now, as the person leaving the question, this is pretty much all I really need to do in terms of the information on here. So I'm going to click OK, and this will save to the client's file, as you can see. Now, Bobby's currently logged in. On his screen, in the bottom right-hand corner, just above where your time is there, he's going to get a pop-up immediately. Let him know that this question was just assigned to him. If he has not been logged in the program when, he, when this was assigned to him, for him for each of the sections here. And these will come up when you first log in, and their default design, especially when you open them up any time that you prefer. They will show you all of the items that are assigned to your name in this fashion that have not been resolved yet. And these will come up every time you log into the program, providing you have unresolved issues, so that they will keep basically bothering you until you've taken care of the items. So on Bobby's screen, I'm just going to do a quick little search here for the upper one to show what it would look like for that one item. So here's the one item you would see. From the list here in the More Info tab, or I'm going to use the pop-up system in the program to now make Adam aware that this item now has an answer on it. You'll see the pop-up in the bottom right of my screen with the answer and the question on it. <clears throat> so now that Adam has this, or he is pretty much the same thing. It's just that it's for every other kind of communication you get from your clients. So you can copy and paste emails in here, or log text messages, phone calls, documents that you receive from a client, uh, client requests, anything you can think of, you can put it in this list here. Now the first thing you're going to notice is the communication type dropdown will be blank for, uh, for starters. What we want you to do is just click the little bubble right beside that dropdown, and then just add in what are your most common types of communications from your clients here. So as I said, phone calls, emails, text messages, walk-ins, client requests, receive documents, very important stuff, uh, and anything else that you can think of. There is no limit to the amount of communication types you can add to that list. Further to that, not only can you now choose the communication types from here, but once you have them saved in the system, if we now run a search for the lower half, you'll also notice that you can run searches by the actual types that you've added to the system. So I can very, much, very easily now call up just a report that shows me only the phone calls, let's say for all clients, in the past two weeks. So all I would do is specify phone call, 
don't care who put it in or if it's resolved, and then the date range of the last two weeks. So it is very, very easy to make your reports for these two different sections. Now we're going to talk about two final things in this section before we move on to the task department. The first of the last two things that I want to point out is there is an option for auto notifications. It is set up individual per client. And you'll know that you haven't set up the uh, system here for this particular client by looking at the tasks and seeing if the notify checkbox is filled out. If it's not filled out, it means it's not set up for this particular client. If you'd like to set it up, go back to the specific client in the system. You will then have this window come up first and foremost before anything else. Everybody will see this window. And it basically tells you these are the notifications that have to go out. Now, the reason why everybody sees it is most offices will choose one person to be responsible to send these things out. But if that person is gone for a week or two or whatever the case may be, the rest of the office still needs to know that these notifications have to be sent. So you will be aware of them in that event. And that way, if you want to make any last minute adjustments specifically for that client before you send it, you can. Title itself. They'll both bring you to the same spot. And I'm just going to take one second to just reset my columns here to default for a later example we will see. All right, so the task calendar is now available on the left-hand side. And uh, we're obviously logged in as myself, so we're going to see my calendar first and foremost. There is, as I said, a calendar for every different user found in the drop-down in the upper right. By default, it generally looks at your month view because that's the easiest way to organize your work. And what I mean by that is, Everything in here is scheduled based on the in-house due date, as we talked about. Now, let's say that you're not going to be office here on the 17th, so you want to disperse this work to days that make more sense for you. If you click this day, you can open up and see what's in here, and then just simply drag the tasks into days that make more sense. So within a matter of a few seconds, really, you can organize your entire month or day or week or whatever it is you want to do so that it is the most accommodating for your schedule. When you move things in your calendar like this, however, you are not changing the in-house due date. That is just your starting point. At this point, what you're changing is called the calendar due date, which in our opinion becomes the most important date in the system. If you do want to move tasks from one person's calendar to another from the calendar itself, right-click the task and then use the option to send this task to other user and just tell it whose calendar it's going to. So you can also sort out the work to different schedules from here too. Now, we look at our third and final line of defense in the core function of the task section, which is the task list. The columns that you adjust are specific to the physical computer you are sitting at, not the person you're logged in as. So if I want to see some changes here, I'm going to go to the view height columns in the upper left beside that magnifying glass. And also the next seven items below estimated times. Now, these items can be modified in name. I will show you. But their default names are everything from in possession down to payment. That's important. You're going to just want to see that by default. Next up, we've added in the calendar dates. Because as I showed you, you can completely move things around in your calendar. And what's important is that date. So if we have that column visible, we will see this date as it actively changes once we move things around. And further to it, right beside its deadline, is, or sorry, that calendar date is the actual final deadline. So I now know how many days I have left to get this done at all times. And then finally, we added in these other seven checkboxes, which, as I said, are customizable in name. They do apply to every task in the list, and they can give you some overall workflow as to where you are in terms of completing the work in this list. So you can basically check these off to say what you've done as an overall step. So hopefully that comes in handy. We consider those extra fields to be a third line of defense. As you may have noticed, every list in the program does have a view and print report option as well as an export to Excel. All right, now our last section for the day is the personal client section. Now, its core functionality is to very quickly show you where do you stand with the taxes for the status of your clients during that season. But as you might notice, there is a lot of the same informational fields as there were for business clients. So personal clients do have their own more info tab. They also have the edit pencil with the other tab for the customizable fields and the notes section. Either want to edit the information on the client and leave it in the other tab, or put it in the, the more info section as a communication there. Those things do carry forward. Now, the majority of your time is going to be spent in the view list option here of the personal client section. The first thing you want to do 
is have a look at these check boxes and make sure that they do or do not match the way in which you run tax season for your clients. If they don't, which they probably don't, this is just our default set of steps, you can click the shoe print icon here at the top labeled Define Process Steps, which looks like some shoe prints in the snow. Um, and from here, you can swap, delete, modify, and add as many of these check boxes as you require so it is the exact way in which you do your tax season. Once you've had a chance to modify those, you'll see that when you click these check boxes, you will get a color which actually darkens as you go across so you can visually see where are you in terms of the completion of your season. Um, now, one further thing as well is when you click the uh, checkbox to fill it out, if you then click beside it in the same column, it will have recorded who filled that out and on what day. So if there's any discrepancies, you know who to go into. Here's how things generally go. Every single client begins the season with you of the awaiting client status. Now, as we all know, when a client first comes to see you, they don't generally bring you everything you need from them. So your first status switch will probably be on hold missing information. When you do that, you can click the client's name to go right to their file and then maybe add in a communication that says what you're still missing here. When the client finally brings you everything you'll need, I'll change them to in progress and I will click off that I've received all their docs and that date right beside it will be recorded. I can then use the in-house due date to specify when I want these files to be com uh, completed by. From the date you said you received everything, the days in progress will begin counting the amount of days that those files have been in your office until you physically change the status of the client to completed. At which point, that completion date will be recorded in the completed date, and finally, who was overall responsible for this particular client. You would use the Find Client button. It will search by last name first. So as you start typing in the last name, uh, once you find the client's file and click Find, it will highlight it in the list for you. So you don't have to physically scroll down and find that yourself. 